based off of the population assessment video, on how long-tailed macaques are now endangered. I want to continue with talking about a case that I believe has highly contributed to the population decline of long-tailed macaques. You will see that the cost for lab macaques went up in value and in demand. I know some of you are aware of this problem and have already been making comments about it. And I'm glad to see that some of you have already put pieces together, and where that video was leading into this next topic. I just want to point out that this video will be more about the crime of smuggling monkeys and although it will include research labs, I want to keep a focused approach and talk less about them, and more about this crime and corruption. My sources are coming straight from the DOJ, US Department of Justice, and their official statement to the public and official court documents. If you want to see them for yourself, you will be able to look at the sources in the pastebin link in my description, which will then give you a list of all the sources. There's a lot of moving parts in this case and is why it has taken me so long to make this video. There will still be more parts that I will put out. Let's talk about the federal laws in play here. Then the charges these people are facing. After, we'll talk about who is involved, their role, and then prosecutor's timeline of the investigation. To properly understand this case there are some things I must discuss before we get into the finer details. The Lacey and Endangered Species Act is a law that prohibits any kind of trade that violates regulations. The act also prohibits the false record-keeping, labeling, and any other false identifiers when wildlife trade is made with a foreign country. This protects certain species against overexploitation to the U.S. The U.S. has an agreement with other countries to correlate the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, also known as CITES. It's an international agreement between governments to protect endangered plants and animals. Its aim is to ensure that the trade of certain animals and plants does not threaten their survival. The types of animals and plants covered by CITES is diverse. It includes wild animals, plants, and wildlife, as well as the products made from them, such as musical instruments, plants, dried herbs, and exotic leather goods. It's important to keep in mind that CITES is an agreement between countries and does not replace national laws made by government authorities such as USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, DEFRA in the U.K., and BICON in Australia. The trade of certain animals and plants is not allowed with countries who have not signed up to the CITES agreement. It's a system to prevent issues with the species from getting in further trouble with their population. For this case, it will include long-tailed macaques which have been regulated with CITES since 1977 and as of 2022, and shown earlier, are endangered. CITES documents need the following information for importing and exporting protected wildlife. What kind of animal or plant? The species name. Whether the specimen is alive or dead whether it was captive bred or wild, the purpose, whether or not it's partial or full specimens. Long-tailed macaques are under Appendix 2 in CITES which is a classification indicating the species is threatened. Before exporting an protected animal into the U.S., a valid CITES permit must be obtained from the authorities of the exporting or re-exporting country. When arrived to the U.S., a copy of the original CITES permit must be present with the documentation describing the list of things said earlier. Before completing importation, FWS, Fish and Wildlife Services, will complete, fill out, and sign that a certified inspection was finished and examine the documentation that came with the shipment is correct. Typically, research monkeys are bred in China and then shipped to research labs in the U.S. The U.S. only takes in captive-bred monkeys because they lack diseases harmful to humans, and lack diseases that corrupt the research processes. But during the pandemic, most facilities couldn't keep up with the demands. Female macaques only give birth once every two years, and during which, they nurse their babies for over a year. The U.S. was willing to pay premium price on monkeys and ordered the most monkeys worldwide during this time. There are only two species of monkey receptive to COVID. 
Long-tailed macaques are one of them. There's a lot of moving parts in this case and is why it has taken me so long to make this video. There will still be more parts that I will put out. Let's talk about the federal laws in play here. Then the charges these people are facing. After, we'll talk about who is involved, their role, and then prosecutor's timeline of the investigation. Those being charged are of eight counts that include smuggling and conspiracy to violate the Lacey Act and the Endangered Species Act. One count of the eight is a maximum of five years. The rest of the counts of the eight are 20 years maximum each. So if convicted of all, they face 145 years maximum. Up to a $250,000 fines for each of the eight counts. Or more. Let's talk a little bit about who is being charged and their roles before I move on to the timeline given in the indictment. I couldn't find real-life images for all of those involved. So for this video, I will be using cartoon depictions I made. They have nothing to do with how they really look, but so it can help you differentiate between the different people involved and their connections, as I talk about the case. Omelis Kyo. If I'm pronouncing that right. Of Phnom Penh, Cambodia. A government official, the Director General of the Cambodian Forestry Administration, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries. Also is a chairman of the CITES Scientific Authority for Terrestrial Forest and Wildlife Resources, that is responsible to oversee and issue CITES export permits. According to this chart, Omelis Kio is Masful Cry's superior. Masful Cry also goes by the name of Mark Soffel a government official from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. The deputy director of the Department of Wildlife and Biodiversity for the Cambodian Forestry Administration, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries. He was arrested at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York, back in mid-November, 2022. He is the only one so far that has been arrested. James Mann Sang Lao of Hong Kong. Founder slash owner of Vani Bio Research Center of Cambodia located in Hong Kong, which was renamed as Vani Science Development Limited owner of Vani Resources Holdings Corporation LTD in Hong Kong, and Vani Bio Research Corporation LTD in Cambodia. The companies engaged in the capture and laundering of wild long-tailed macaques in Cambodia for export to the U.S. and elsewhere. According to the website for the company, it's supposed to be a breeding facility to distribute monkeys to labs for testing. Here's a little about James Lau's business, Vanny Bio Research. It was incorporated in 2002, and it was accused in 2008 of capturing thousands of wild monkeys and keeping them in inhumane conditions. So it seems James Lau was in the business of illegally capturing monkeys well before the pandemic. But at this time, it was only rumored allegations. Dixon Lau, of Hong Kong, is the general manager for Vanny Resources Holdings and scientific manager. Raphael Chi Ang, living in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, is the public relations and export manager for Vanny Bio Research in both locations operated in Cambodia. One in Phnom Penh and the other in Persit. He coordinated the delivery of wild long-tailed macaques to the VRBC facilities in Cambodia for export to the U.S. Sunny Chan, a resident of Hong Kong, is the Deputy General Operations Manager at Vanny Group HK. He handled the coordination of shipments of the wild long-tailed macaques that were exported to the U.S. from Cambodia. These two acronyms will come up frequently so try to remember them. MAFF Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fishery. VBRC, Vanny's Bio Research Center. Sarah Yeung, a Hong Kong resident and finance manager of Vanny Group. She executed the financial transactions that provided the funding to VBRC in Phnom Penh and Persit facilities. They made payments to the black market collectors and MAFF employees for the wild long-tailed macaques captured by them, 
and were then delivered to VBRC facilities for export to the U.S. Not quite sure how to pronounce this one either. Hing I P Chiang of Phnom Penh, Cambodia. A general manager of Vani Bio Research Corporation in Cambodia and managing director of VBRC. Facilitated the payments to the Cambodian government officials for their involvement in the capture of wild, long tailed macaques. And also made payments to the black market collectors of wild, long tailed macaques for export to the U.S. There are two unindicted co conspirators that I will discuss in a later video. The investigation started in mid-December of 2017. At that time, Raphael Chiang Man met with Omelis and discussed the collection of long-tailed macaques from Cambodia National Parks. That same day, Raphael advised James Lau, Hing I P, and Sarah Young that Omelis would arrange MAFF staff to collect 2,000 monkeys for Vanny's Bio Research Center (VBRC), and they will be charged as quote a royalty tax of the U.S. 3150 to nation treasure. That Omelis will instruct the director of the National Park to work out a survey report of the monkey population. In this case, that being massful cry. May 4, 2018, Raphael emailed James, Hing, and Sarah, advising them that he had told Omelis that they were short to export and needed 300 to 500 more heads to fulfill for an order in July. He advised them that Omelis will persuade his superior of the collection of monkeys needed. This email further reported that any collection by MAFF personnel would have to be after July 29th elections, to avoid unnecessary attention from the public and NGOs. But VBRC would collect monkeys immediately and they'd be off to set against a quota of 2,000 monkeys that would be issued on May 17. The email also requested them to arrange a payment of $40,000 to MAFF. June 14, 2018, Raphael reported in an email addressing to James, Hing, Sarah, and Sonny that he received information from Omelis. That the minister had approved and issued the collection quota and final payment and should be made to MAFF. Later that same day, an email addressed to James, Hing, Sonny, and Raphael from Sarah that requested a firm date for remittance. As Sarah needed to respond to Omelis and said, besides, election campaigns start, most officials need the fund. June 25, 2018, Raphael, along with Hing, Sarah, and Sonny, received a remittance document from an employee from Vanny HK reflecting that $83,259, originating from Vanny Chain Technology Limited of Hong Kong, passed through the Bank of America in New York, New York. It was received by VBRC's Cambodian Bank. Itemized on the remittance was $40,000 for, in quote, PP Animal Collection 2000 Heads. June 26, 2018, Vanny HK sent an email to Raphael, Hing, Sonny and Sarah with an internal accounting document titled PP Purchase Application Form, which reflected a donation for the CPP party. A request from Omelis in the amount of $10,000. The document was signed by Hing and Raphael. This email noted in quote, spoke to Mr. Lau. Later that day, Raphael emailed a copy of MAFF collection permit for the collection of 2,000 monkeys by VRBC to Hing, Sarah, and Sonny. 2018 will mark 25 years since a United Nations organized election meant to set Cambodia on the path to democracy after years of civil war. Today, critics say it is starting to resemble a one-party state dominated by Prime Minister Hun Sen. He has been in power for more than 30 years and could be virtually unopposed at the next election in July.
Cambodia's democratic journey has been deeply troubled. Political intrigue and infighting, sometimes leading to violent clashes between factions. But the country has generally held to the democratic vision planned for it. Until, that is, the latter part of 2017. The opposition leader, Kem Sokar, was arrested at the beginning of September for allegedly plotting with foreigners to overthrow the government. The Supreme Court then used that allegation to dissolve his party, the CNRP. The government says the party was a threat to democracy, not the other way round. The CNRP will create a problem and then that uh, they never listen to a king, they never listen to I mean, the state institution, they are very obey the foreigners. As 2018 starts, Hun Sen knows the protests from abroad will mostly be forgotten. And the changing skyline in Phnom Penh is a reminder of the Chinese investment which now protects him from the risk of the US and Europe withdrawing funding, allowing him to consolidate power with an election victory seen as a stamp of legitimacy. This next clip you will see literally made my jaw drop. As we just learned from the U.S. attorney's indictment, these government officials were illegally selling monkeys and donating to the CCP and at this very time, they were really concerned about bringing any attention to the public and the NGOs about the missing monkeys. It seems the CCP made sure that wouldn't happen. The political crackdown was accompanied by what rights groups say was a clampdown on civil society, with the closure of a leading newspaper and restrictions on the activities of non-government organizations. If Cambodia's election was held under normal circumstances, there may have been victory celebrations here. Instead, the headquarters of the dissolved Cambodia National Rescue Party is empty. Fearing arrest, most party leaders are outside Cambodia, where they watched in dismay and sadness at Sunday's election being conducted without them. 29 July 2018 marked the death of democracy in Cambodia a new dark day of its history. The ruling Cambodian People's Party of Prime Minister Hun Sen won the election easily after having the main opposition dissolved and its leader arrested. It's fair to say that this is now a, uh, a one-party authoritarian state. It's the end of the Cambodia after the Paris Peace Agreements. It's, it's a, like I said, a whole new bad Cambodia. Your Excellency, congratulations on a wonderful, on a wonderful victory for democracy and for Cambodia. Congratulations. The day after the vote, Hun Sen was beaming as he greeted one of the main so-called independent election monitors. The banned opposition is running out of options to try to bring about political change and isn't ruling out supporting peaceful protests. That may be a last difficult resort. As the Prime Minister has tightened his grip on power, he's become increasingly intolerant of protests. Behind this huge wall is what used to be Freedom Park, a high-profile designated protest site in the heart of the city. July 21, 2018, VBRC shipped 440 samples of blood serum drawn from long-tailed macaques to an analytical laboratory in San Antonio, Texas for testing. The samples were shipped through CITES regulations which said they were drawn from monkeys that were captive bred. July 25, 2018, a location in Southern District of Florida, imported a shipment containing 150 long-tailed macaques from BBRC. FWS forms and CITES permits presented the shipment as entirely captive bred. On August 13, 2018, Raphael reported to James, Dixon, Hing, Sarah, and Sonny that he had met with MAFF officials, including Massful Cry, also known to Raphael as Mark Soffel, during which they discussed the price for the official quota of $150 for each of the 2,000 monkeys and $220 each for the unofficial quota of 3,000 which MAFF employees would collect and transport to the VBRC facility in Perset. He said that MAFF preferred collecting as soon as possible during the rainy season 
and expected to complete all necessary collection before the end of the year. MAFF would provide VBRC a four to five hours notice before the deliveries that would likely arrive that night. Several days later, Omelis verified and assured Raphael that, quote, unofficial animals would not appear on VBRC's monthly report and that MAFF would conceal the unofficial monkeys from the local Phnom Penh and Perset officials. On November 2, 2018, Raphael sent an email to Dixon, Hing, Sarah, and Sonny, reporting that he met with MAFF Collections team leader, Masful Cry, aka Mark Soffel, and advanced him 10,000 US dollars to him to care on the collection that they had mutually agreed on. That also MAFF would collect and deliver 300 animals weighing between 2 to 4 kilograms within the month. Raphael asked his superiors for the funds necessary to settle before the end of the month, representing the amounts owed to MAFF for the 300 monkeys and for royalty taxes due on the official quota. May 11, 2019, a shipment imported into the U.S. of 360 long-tailed macaques contained 74 wild monkeys. The shipment was documented as captive bred. June 27, 2018, 360 monkeys were imported to the U.S. 194 were wild monkeys and was listed as entirely captive bred. On September 1, 2019, Massful Cry, accompanied by two other MAFF employees, delivered 24 long-tailed macaques to VBRC's facility in Perset, during which Cry suggested that the land immediately behind the VBRC facility should be purchased to make a road that would make it, quote, more safe for smuggling. September 3, 2019, a black market supplier was paid approximately $10,380 for the delivery of approximately 60 wild long-tailed macaques to the VBRC facility in Perset. On or about October 8, 2019, Hing emailed Sarah that VBRC didn't have enough cash on hand after having made payments to MAFF and requested $30,000 from Sarah for the collection fund to pay for additional 100 monkeys which were on their way. October 20, 2019, Massful Cry, accompanied by two other MAFF employees delivered 20 wild long-tailed macaques to the VBRC facility in Perset. December 13, 2019, a black market supplier was paid $8,360 for the delivery of 38 wild long-tailed macaques to VBRC facility in Perset. On January 6, 2020, a shipment of 288 long-tailed macaques containing approximately 237 wild macaques. The permit reflected the shipment was entirely captive bred. March to October 2020, VBRC paid approximately $2.5 million for 14,423 wild long-tailed macaques from seven different black market suppliers. On June 21, 2020, Cry delivered 35 wild long-tailed macaques to the VBRC facility in Perset and provided a contact information, using the name PHAL. On November 11, 2020, of the 396 long-tailed macaques containing approximately 323 wild monkeys was imported to the U.S. at the Dallas airport, to Virginia, then delivered to Miami, Florida. All were said to be captive bred. On January 26, 2022, in an exchange of social media communications, Raphael discussed the delivery by a black market supplier of wild long-tailed macaques to VBRC and received return confirmation that 115 macaques had in fact been received, and discussed that they expected delivery from another black market supplier, 
of another 170 wild long-tailed macaques. Here is a chart similar to the one in the indictment, showing the cash value and the amount of macaques sent to Miami-Dade, Southern District of Florida, for each of the charges. During these years of investigation, the U.S. took in nearly 76,000 long-tailed macaques. Cambodia being one of the biggest suppliers. Especially, during the pandemic. These are just the federal charges brought on from the state of Florida. This isn't including other states with labs that VBRC sent. For the rest of this video I just want to list the things from the indictment that says how they conspired these crimes together. I do have more resources and information on this case. If you're interested in knowing more let me know in the comments, and I'll work on making another video. As you can see, this case has so many moving parts. It's not a case with just one alleged criminal but many, and this is just an indictment for the arrest. Or in other words, a list of allegations they believe they have evidence to prove, but it's not all the details. Those won't come out unless it gets to trial. The DA says in the indictment that they fraudulently and knowingly imported and brought into the U.S. wild-caught, long-tailed macaques. Contrary to any law and regulations. Purposes and manner in which they conspired. 1. For financial gain, using established facilities in Cambodia, that they reported to breed long-tailed macaques for sale on the world market. 2. They engaged with customers in the U.S. and elsewhere in a contractual agreement, to sell and export macaques as captive bred. 3. Established logistic systems to allow buyers to inspect macaques prior to sale, including through the use of veterinarians, to test the monkeys for disqualifying conditions, quarantine shipments before exporting, and arrange the necessary ground and air transportation to facilities, and handle transactions. 4. Arranged to illegally purchase additional long-tailed macaques for their lack of supply for suitable monkeys, with the use of the black market suppliers mainly from Cambodia and Thailand. 5. Would primarily deliver the illegally caught monkeys to the VBRC facility in Perset. 6. Act as a source under the designated black market supply of wild-caught macaques from national parks and protected areas in which MAFF employees delivered to VBRC for later sale and export. 7. To provide transport permits which allowed macaques unsuitable for export to be sent from the Perset facility to the Phnom Penh facility, where they were euthanized and their identification tags transferred to appear like the black market macaques were captive bred at VBRC facilities. 8. Provided unofficial collection quotas for cash payments to MAFF that were authorized at Vanny HK and made by VBRC employees. 9. Delivered and caused the delivery of wild caught, long tailed macaques to go to various international airports to the U.S. 10. Lastly, upon entry into the U.S., the long tailed macaques would be forwarded by truck from the port of entry to the quarantine facility designated by the importer consignees whom were in various states including Southern District of Florida. Juan Antonio Gonzalez, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida said, The macaque is already recognized as an endangered species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The practice of illegally taking them from their habitat to end up in a lab is something we need to stop. Greed should never come before responsible conservation. Cases like this put us in a position where we can make a difference.